Over on Jaguar Gator 8, a new college football video is out. In this video, we talk about the time in 1992 that Oklahoma State accidentally scheduled two games for the same day. Click the card in the upper right corner to watch. And now, on with our feature presentation. I thought I was done with this series after the regular season ended. Seriously, I thought I could give this series a well-needed vacation, let it go on a cruise or something, and let it rest and recover before bringing it back a few months later from some historical episodes. I thought once the playoffs hit that everyone would learn their lesson, that we would truly get the best of the best, and we wouldn't have coaches continually messing up the clock and not knowing how to handle timeouts. And we wouldn't have coaches who still think that you can carry your timeouts over to the 2023 season. But apparently not. So much for that. Because once again, we have a coach horribly mismanaging the clock. Only this time, it's not in the regular season. It's in the playoffs. Now we've seen coaches fail miserably in the playoffs before when it comes to horrible clock management and awareness at the worst possible time. Lest we forget what happened at the 1985 NFC Championship, which will forever be the worst time management ever, where the Rams had a timeout and the ball in the red zone against the Bears with over a minute left, and somehow did not score or have the chance to line up for a field goal because they ran out of time. You can learn more about that by clicking the card in the upper right corner. And we will continue to see coaches fail at this in the future. But it's just so disheartening after literally everything we've been through this year, where it feels like I'm making the same video every single week, that we've still got this issue. And for John Harbaugh of all people, a man who's been a head coach since 2008 and is widely respected, to have this happen to him? Oh man, it's been that kind of year. For those who aren't watching this in the immediate aftermath of the game, here is a brief recap of how we got to this point. It's January 15th, 2023. It's the wildcard round, and we've got an AFC North battle between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Baltimore Ravens under the lights in prime time in front of a national television audience. Obviously, the stakes for this game are huge. Not only is it a playoff game, where the winner moves on and the loser goes home, but it's a divisional rivalry, and it's the rubber match in a series that was split over the course of their two regular season meetings. As for the Ravens, they've got to do this without their star quarterback and former MVP, Lamar Jackson, as he's still nursing a PCL injury. That means that in order to defeat the reigning AFC champions, a team that's won eight straight games, and a team that has not lost since Halloween, and in order to stop this skin of theirs at the worst possible time where they've lost 3 out of 4, they need to do it with backup quarterback Tyler Huntley. But hey, to Baltimore's credit, they're doing it! It's the fourth quarter, it's a tied game, and they've got third and goal at the one yard line. There's no way anything here can possibly go well, crap! So, uh, yeah, that stinks. But hey, it's only a 7 point game, and thanks to some stands by your defense, you've still got a shot to tie or possibly win this one. Thanks to a great punt return, you've got the ball in Cincinnati territory with over three minutes left and two timeouts. You know this is your last chance of the game, but the good news is that with less than half the field to go, with three minutes and three timeouts if we count the two minute warning as a de facto timeout, time is not even the slightest bit of a concern. You still have plenty of time to make something happen especially after a critical fourth down conversion at the two minute warning to keep the drive alive. And after any legal use of hands penalty by the Bengals, you've got two timeouts and 117 left, needing to go just 28 yards. There is no way, at least from a clock perspective, that you can possibly mess this up. You need to try to be inept in order to mismanage this much time just outside the red zone with those two timeouts to work with. And on first down, when Huntley hits J.K. Dobbins for a gain of 11, you've now got the ball in the red zone with 107 left. Now call a timeout, get everyone reset, give yourself the maximum number of plays to make this work, and you're absolutely cook- Uh, Coach? Coach Herbal? Is this Take Your Brother to Work Day, where you're letting Jim try out his TCU strategy again? Why is the clock still running? You're not going to have enough time to maximize your chances of scoring you're not going to put yourself in a great position. Why is the clock still running? In the name of all things Edgar Allan Poe, why is the 
clock still run- Well, I don't even know what to say. I genuinely don't know. The only thing that would be stupider is if you were dumb enough to call a running play in this limited time that you have left. Just to rub some salt on the wound in terms of how badly you mismanaged that. Oh god, he's about to do that, isn't he? Just as Hill's the back, and they're gonna run with Hill. Tries to bounce to the outside. Apple is there. He goes out of bounds, but there is a flag down. Welcome to Dumb Decisions. Before I break down what happened here, this whole series is about taking an in-depth look at decisions made during games that were clearly awful from the start. This isn't something to look bad in hindsight. Rather, this is something to look awful almost immediately. These are moves where your gut instinct tells you right away that there is no way this can possibly work. And sure enough, your gut instinct was smarter than that of an NFL head coach. And for this one, we're taking a look at the minds of Baltimore Ravens head coach John Harbaugh. I have no clue what the future holds in Baltimore. I don't know what it means from a coaching standpoint, since Harbaugh has only led his team to one playoff win in the last eight years. And players are frustrated, especially if what J.K. Dobbins rightfully had to say after the game is anything to go off of. I don't know what it means from a quarterback standpoint, because it's becoming more and more likely with each passing day that Lamar played his last game in Baltimore. Bottom line, it's going to be a messy, chaotic, and unpredictable offseason. And if this is how the John Harbaugh tenure comes to an end, or enters a new era, then man, what a horrible way to have it happen. Because this game was completely in your control, and awful coaching all the way around, especially with this final sequence, absolutely ruin your chances. So with that being said, let's take a look at why not calling a timeout right away, and instead, letting a whopping 33 seconds run off the clock for no reason is a horrible idea. At this point, your mind has to be thinking about how many plays you possibly have left, and what the maximum number of plays to call is, assuming no penalties occur. In this case, after Dobbins got the first down, you're at the 17-yard line. Obviously, it's four down territory, so you can get one first down before it becomes first and goal, and then you have four chances from a goal to go situation. This means that you have a maximum of eight plays left to reach the end zone and tie or even win the game if you go for two. And knowing Harbaugh, especially with what he did during the 2021 season, he'd probably go for two and try and win it right there. And obviously, you want all eight plays because you want the maximum number of chances possible to score. It's like if you're playing the lottery, and you can buy 10 tickets for 10 bucks, or you can buy 20 tickets for 10 bucks. You're buying more tickets, because you want more chances to win. Now you have to assume that a play will take, on average, 7 seconds to complete. I know I said in previous videos that you should assume 5 seconds per play, but that's because I was talking about plays to get closer into field goal range, where you can go short and use the sideline and call three and four yard out routes, since getting even a yard closer can make a big difference. But here, it's going to take a bit longer, just because you're calling some of these plays into the end zone, and the receivers have to have the time to get there, or to get open and create separation. With that, let's evaluate the two scenarios. The scenario where Harbaugh does the smart thing and calls timeout right away with 107 left, and the scenario where Harbaugh does the dumb thing and just lets the clock run all the way down to 34 seconds. If you call the timeout with 107 left, assuming each play takes 7 seconds to complete, considering that you have 8 plays maximum, you need 56 seconds to get the maximum number of chances. Plus, you still have a timeout, so if something goes horribly wrong, like you get sacked, or there is an intentional grounding penalty and you would otherwise have to take a 10 second runoff, you're still fine and you have that as an insurance option. Heck, you could even still run the ball if it's a third and short or a fourth and short situation. Bottom line, if you have one timeout left with 107, time is not even the slightest bit of an issue whatsoever. Even if it takes eight plays, assuming you hit fourth down on this sequence and then hit fourth and goal, you don't have to worry about the clock running out on you. As for scenario number two, where Harbaugh keeps the timeout but lets 33 seconds run down so that there's 34 seconds left, holy cow, you just destroyed your chances. Again, let's assume that the average play takes 7 seconds for those aforementioned reasons. 
Good news. You have one extra play to the middle of the field. I guess because you have an additional timeout. This doesn't really matter, especially since you only need to snap the ball with one second left for it to count. So even in the first scenario, if we assume that you have eight plays left, and the first seven plays take seven seconds each, which means 49 seconds total out of 67, you still have 17 seconds left to play with where you can use the middle of the field and not burn a timeout. So the point of having the extra timeout doesn't really mean anything because you're in the same exact boat in that regard. But the negative? Well, if the average play takes seven seconds, good job. You've now only got five, maybe six chances at the end zone. But at least you got that extra time out. So happy you got that going for you at least. Bottom line, by not calling the timeout right away, you just took two or three opportunities for you to reach the end zone. And this means that if you do something really stupid, like, I don't know, call a running play for some reason that results in a holding penalty, taking away one of those plays, you'll be in a spot where quite possibly the only way to score is by throwing up a Hail Mary and hoping for the best. You just hindered your chances of winning and took away two or three of your plays. Remember the scene in the Spongebob movie where King Neptune gives Spongebob 10 days to retrieve his crown from Shell City? And then Patrick, for no reason, keeps lowering the number and says we can do it in six? That's what Harbaugh just did. That's exactly what Harbaugh just did. Just like Patrick decreased his chances of success by cutting the number of days he had to retrieve the crown, you just decreased your chances of success by cutting the number of plays you had to find the end zone. And you did it, at least from what I could tell, for no good reason. Well, I shouldn't say that. Harbaugh did at least explain his reasoning, but I'm not going to call it good by any means. As Harbaugh said after the game, we wanted to save the timeouts for the red zone. The idea was, we wanted to keep those timeouts to throw the ball. We wanted to score without giving the ball back. We think we're going to get in the red zone. We think it's going to be a certain number of plays, and we're going to work right down to the end of the game. Rather than score with 30, 35 seconds left, you give them a chance to go kick a field goal at the end. So I think we played it right. Didn't work out in the sense that after that, we had incomplete passes. If you complete the passes, you get the ball in the red zone, you call the timeouts. We had the timeouts worked right. All right, on one hand, even though his logic is completely wrong and saving the timeouts was a terrible idea for the aforementioned reasons, since pocketing them in that spot is a complete misunderstanding of the situation at hand, and even though for some inexplicable reason he did not plan for incomplete passes, I get the idea of not wanting to score with too much time left on the clock. Believe me, I get the idea of not wanting to give the ball back to the opposition. Having said that, why was this a concern? Your first priority should be to score, not to worry about what happens after you score. You first have to plan to score and give yourself the best possible chance to do so. It's like if I go furniture shopping before I even know what house I'm going to buy, or if I register my horse for the Kentucky Derby before I even buy a horse. I like a coach that has foresight, but you can't neglect foresight for the present moment. And number two, this wasn't a shootout. Your defense was playing great. On the last three drives, the Bengals went three and out, three and out before a roughing the kicker penalty extended the drive, which was just another three and out, and three and out. Why were you so worried about this hypothetical with the strength of your defense in this game? And when you had to find the end zone first? Nothing about this made any sense. This was an if A then B scenario, and you were so worried about B for some reason that was completely unfounded that you never focused on A, even though you needed A to happen. Just really bad coaching all the way around. And it baffles me as to how John Harbaugh gave us some of the worst clock management of the year when it mattered most. So what do we learn from all this? Saving your timeouts is good, but not if it comes at the expense of letting the entire clock run down. If you break things down from a maximum number of plays and chances left perspective, 
then it becomes a heck of a lot easier to make decisions regarding the clock. If you need a touchdown, and you don't give yourself the maximum number of chances to score a touchdown, then you are actively hurting your team's chances at winning the game. And if you're so worried about the other team scoring on you for some reason, yet you're completely bungling the situation where your own team has to score first, then maybe it's time to reevaluate your priorities and think things over. Because when all these elements are in play, you can't exactly be surprised when this play backfires. Talk about a dumb decision. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com. And be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JaguarGator9. To see college football videos, subscribe to JaguarGator8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated so you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.